Holmer. Uh, I run a data company up in Iceland, and I'm here to share uh, an experience, a personal experience, uh, about eruptions and open data. So, uh, well, 15 seconds is longer than I thought. <laughs> so, setting the scene. Uh, this is planet Earth. Uh, up here is Iceland. It's a volcanic island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. It stands on a ridge between two tectonic plates that are moving apart and then therefore ripping the, the island apart. And that's the reason for the volcanic activity. Now, this is the island up close. Uh, pretty much everybody lives around here, uh, at least uh, around the coastal areas. Up here are highlands that are un uninhabited, and down here is Eyjafjallajökull. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, last year we had a huge and this is not the one you know about. So um, it happened between two glaciers, between Eyjafjallajökull and, Eyjafjallajökull and the next glacier. So people, people uh, brought out their, uh, their toys from the boom years to visit, to visit the place. And uh, it was beautiful scenery. Uh, you had like, we had tens of thousands of people going up there. There was a 400 meter high lava fall at one point, uh, and it was it just kept developing. Um, I went up there with my wife. It, it, was, it was fantastic. So, uh, being a data, a data guy, I started looking for data around this. And as you can imagine, these places are monitored quite heavily. The triangles here show you the uh, sensors, the, the earthquake sensors around the glacier. And there are all sorts of other sensors, as you'll see in the next slides. So, me uh, working in visualization, the, east, kind of the, the uh, obvious thing to do was take this data and visualize it. So, we started working on this. Uh, and on the 13th of April, I was actually working on this when I noticed something interesting this year. Uh, so this is earthquake data. So all of a sudden, at, uh, you know, just before midnight on the 13th of April, there are, there's a lot of uh, relatively big earthquakes. They're not big in terms of kind of big earthquakes. Uh, two to three on the Richter scale. There's a lot of them, and some of them really close to the surface. So I throw this out on Facebook, basically saying, uh, is there another eruption coming up? This seems to be in the top of the glacier. Uh, and all of my friends, they, they start kind of sending us other things. Uh, so this is a scientist working with, with the math office. He points to other data and so on. And pretty quickly, we have a dashboard of things that are happening, just watching data that comes from sensors all over the place. Uh, and for about 90 minutes, my Facebook thread was probably the best source of information about this uh, volcanic activity uh, anywhere. Like one and a half hours later, the local media kicks in. Uh, and they start, uh, start kind of uh, covering it. Uh, it took one and a half days for the international media to, to kick in, and that only happened when it started affecting flights all over the place. Now, it's a lot of data. So one of the things that happen when an uh, eruption goes, uh, goes underneath a glacier is that sheet loads of water get melted. So these are water level meters. Uh, so all of a sudden, in the, in, the, in the morning, we were watching this. Uh, so it went up to five meters very quickly, and then just, you know, we've not heard from it since. <laughs> but this is the reason. This is before the eruption, this afternoon, the day after. And this is kind of the sands below the, the area. Uh, these things can get as uh, big as the Amazon. Uh, so uh, here's, I'm in a long-hate relationship with infographics. This airplane is not too scared. <laughs> this is what it is. This is an airplane to scale. So they're relatively big. <laughs> so uh, during the eruption, there were all sorts of other data. People put up webcams, there were radar images coming up. This farm actually moved more than a feet uh, you know, during, the uh, during the eruption. Uh, so these are the GPS measurements showing that. Here's the ash cloud seen from above. <clears throat> so finally, it subsided. Uh, we, made, we finished the visualization, it made it to the National Geographic. So we were happy. And this was a relatively interesting experience. Now, interestingly, this happened again, like just three or four weeks ago. Uh, there was another amateur that actually scooped the, uh, the, the eruption we had done. Half an hour before anybody else had this, he had this blog post out. And this all happened because of open data, because the data is openly available out there. Now, uh, that's really interesting. So, we have this nerve system of the Earth that people can plug into. Companies like mine and others that are more into sensor data like Pachoop and, and FluidDB. Uh, and we can plug into those data. Now the question is, who's going to be the brain? We have the nerve system, who's going to be the brain? Uh, we can, you know, I'm pretty sure that with all this data out there, uh, we'll see all sorts of applications and, uh, you know, and people developing uh, early warning systems, uh, scooping you know, for the media. Uh, and you know, uh, probably saving lives while at it, but it's really important that the data is open and available out there. Thank you.